Hey guys, quick vlog on learning to code. This is what I hear uh, on a regular basis. Somebody is learning to write code, and when you're first learning to write code, it looks like something like this, maybe. It looks like gibberish to you. But gradually, day by day, as you work through it, your mind will slowly start being able to read this, and this code will start reading like your first language. For me, it's English, so I'm going to put some English here. This is normal, and I call those the nerd eyes. The eyes, those being the eyes that allow you to read code like you would read your first language. For me, it's English, so it could be you French, it could be whatever, Sanskrit. Who knows? If you're Elvish, maybe it's Elvish. Anyhow, so when you're learning to code, a lot of times what you find is that you hit something and you write the code out and it just won't work and you're reading it and you're going, I can't see the mistake. I can't see it. Maybe there's a bug in the software. It's not likely, right? So what's more likely is that you're learning and you haven't developed those nerd eyes. And still, and because you don't have the nerd eyes, you're not e able to see the code as clearly as you will once you develop the nerd eyes. So how you develop nerd eyes? You write code and you do it frequently. So you write some code and you find yourself, I can't read, I can't find a mistake. That's when it's time to walk away from that. Go do something that's the opposite of coding. Go for a run, go for some exercise, go read a bit, go watch TV, whatever. Come back to it four hours later, the next day, and oftentimes what will happen, you're going to look at the code, you're going to go, ah, now I understand. I, 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 can't, I can't understand why I didn't see this. Guess what? It happens to even the best coders in the world, even after they know their stuff really well. That's why the development world in the late 90s developed something called paired programming, where you'd have one coder who's actively coding and you have the other coder beside him and, or her and just watching. Why did they do this? You figure, why do you, why you have what, two coders doing, doing this? Isn't that a way? Shouldn't you have each coder coding? No, what they found is that having that second coder watching and, and playing like the wing, wingman to the main coder, it allowed for a lot more productivity because as you're coding, you get into it and your brain's just gonna miss things. But somebody sitting beside you, their brain won't be as fatigued and they'll see things that you won't see. And as a result, the code comes out quicker, quicker, it comes out cleaner. Again, it's because Sometimes what's not obvious to you right away will be obvious to you the next day or it'll be obvious to somebody who's just fresh, fresh-minded. So you may be coding and you won't see the error, even though it's a simple error. But the guy beside you comes in or the girl beside you says, hey, uh, it's just there. It's, you just got to fix that there. Oh, that's what happened. This happens all the time. Now, the guy who, who didn't see that little mistake it's not because he's dumb or she's dumb. Or it's not because they're, they're incompetent. It just happens. It happens. It could be a junior. You could be a master coder, 10th degree coder, black belt, and you, you'll miss something. And some junior will walk in who's have, who has fresh eyes, just, have, you know, not fatigue, and will go, oh, no, you just, you just, you, you, you use the uh, a capital uh, uppercase here, the lowercase. Oh, geez. And you fix it and you're done. So, it's even more pronounced when you're beginning because you still haven't developed the nerd eyes, the coder's eyes. And so things will look kind of gibberish to you at first. But again, if you find yourself hitting the wall that way, you just can't figure something out, that's when you walk away, come back, next day, four hours later, whatever, get your mind off it. A lot of times behind the scenes, your super powerful monkey lizard brain will, um, will be working out the details. And you sit down and you go, oh, there's the answer. Boom, bun. That's it. So there you go. When you have problems, you're not seeing the code, the code is cloudy. Chances are it's just something uh, like that. So chances are all you have to do is just take a step back, come back to it, and the answer will come to you. That's why I say to you, and I've said in other videos, the key to learning anything quickly is about frequency of exposure, not duration. Meaning 10 minutes every day is better than sitting down once for 30 minutes. You actually learn more quickly. Anyway, the brain needs a little rest in between, right? Just like when you're working out, you need to give your body a rest. Bodybuilders will talk about that. The resting period is just as important as the actual workout because you need, you need to give your body a chance to recover. 
And when you're learning something new, the brain is literally creating new pathways. It's actually restructuring itself. It needs time to do that. So when you're learning, drink lots of water, drink some coffee, drink lots of water, drink some coffee. Actually, fasting will help you with your thinking as well uh, because it just, uh, it releases, well, somebody explained in the YouTube. They said it uh, causes the body to go to fat. The fat has nutrients that the brain needs, helps it to do its thing. That's why when you, uh, you fast, it actually helps with your cognitive capabilities. Anyway, there we go.